Michael Luckadoo with ArmchairBuilder.com here. Hey listen, today I want to show you how to install a dry stack ledge stone on an interior wall. Now this type of ledge stone can help you create a nice feature wall on a fireplace, a bar like we have here, or even just a wall all by itself. And the nice thing about this particular stone from Lowe's is that it comes in panels so that installation is much quicker. And because it's a dry stack, we don't need to grout in between the stones. So here's a closer look after installation. You can see the character in this stone because each piece is a different size and thickness. A really cool texture is created on the surface. So the other big benefit to installing this stone on a bar wall like this is to prevent the shoe scuff marks. You know, with paint, you're regularly having to touch up the wall. So guys, the installation I'm going to show you today is actually stone on this bar wall, an interior application, okay? So if we were going to do this on an exterior of a building, it'd be a totally different installation. So only what we're showing you today, only used for interiors, okay? Now the product we've got here is a ledge stone and it's, it's available at Lowe's, um, maybe other places, but we got ours at Lowe's. Now this is, the one thing I like about this, this is about eight bucks a square foot. Um, anywhere uh, within most of the continental U.S. Uh, we, here in Hawaii, it's about 20% more. It's about $10 a square foot. Now, this is actual real stone. A lot of the stuff you see on buildings in today's world is actually a cultured stone or manufactured. This is actually real pieces of stone that have been glued together on the, um, between the pieces. One of the things to be aware of with this particular stone, any stone for that matter, is that during shipping, there's gonna be some damage, right? Especially these, because they're actually glued together, the pieces. Um, now, we found that a lot of the product was damaged that we looked at, so we went piece by piece through the boxes to pick out the ones that we wanted that were whole, right? So to save yourself some time, you may wanna do that. Otherwise, buy a whole lot extra, so you know that you've got enough. So our wall is about 23 square feet. Now, in most applications like this, where you're installing stone or a tile, um, you wanna buy at least a 10% extra, more than you need, just in case you, cut, you break something or you've got damaged pieces, that kind of thing in transit. So just make sure you've got plenty so you don't have to run back and forth to the store. It'll save you some time. So a couple of the things, guys, you'll need for your installation besides the stone. If you've got any outlets where your stone's going, you might want to get some of these electrical box extenders. They're really cheap, a couple bucks, and basically it brings out that outlet so that it's flush with the top of the stone. The other thing you want to do is get, obviously, a mortar. In this case, this is a heavy product because it's real stone and it's about you know half to three quarter inches thick, so it's heavy. So we want to use a polymer modified mortar. So the tools you need for this project are pretty simple, guys. You need a wet saw. We've got one that we got at Lowe's a while back. We've done multiple tile jobs on it. it costs us less than 100 bucks. So you need a wet saw, nothing special. Uh, you need some uh, you know, uh, eyeglasses to protect your eyes, some safety glasses. You, know, you need a tape measure, a level to make sure that you're keeping the stone level, and you want a, a, a half inch uh, uh, square notch trowel like this that's gonna actually put the, the um, mortar on the wall and then you're gonna butter the back side of the tile with the, uh, the, the flat edge. You know, with any product, you always wanna look at the manufacturer's installation uh, details, okay? And a lot of people in this particular, I went online and looked at this before I actually uh, tackled this project and noticed a lot of people are asking, can I install this stone directly over drywall or do I need to put cement board back up? Now, in this case, we're in a dry application. So according to the manufacturer, we can install directly over drywall. So if you have a new drywall though, they want you to prime it. Um, and most mortars will tell you that as well, the thin sets. Um, but you can install this directly over drywall up to 10 feet in height. So if you have maybe a two-story family room and you're gonna install this on your fireplace, just make sure if it's over you know, 10 feet, you're gonna wanna use some sort of backer board to ad adhere it to so you get a better adhesion. In this case, we should be fine with the drywall. So for our bar wall installation, the first thing we're gonna do is draw a line, a start line with our level for where we're gonna start installing stone. Next, we're gonna remove the base molding. You may choose to leave your base molding in place, but it actually, in our opinion, takes away from the look of the installation. So we wanted the stone to start all the way at the base of the wall. So the other thing we've done here is we've separated the stone into two piles. This particular stone is called Desert Quartz Ledge Stone and each panel has either a gray or a beige look to it. So we arrange the panel by color so we can evenly distribute the colors when installing them. 
as you can see, these panels have more of a beige look to them, and then these here are more gray. Obviously, what you don't want to happen is to install random panels up on the wall and then find out that you've got big pockets of either beige or gray, and it's not evenly distributed, which will take away from the look of your, of your new wall. So now we've laid down some drop cloths to protect the floor, and we've started to lay out the panels uh, before we actually mix the mortar. So we want to check to make sure the floor is level. If not, we're going to want to compensate for it when we install the panels. We're going to use some shims to set the first row of panels on. That way we'll have about an eighth of an inch gap underneath the first row of panels in case we need to repair the floor or maybe replace a floor tile. We can get to it. So now we're ready to start installing the stone panels in the lower left hand corner of our wall here. We're going to check each piece to make sure that it's flush with the line that's on the left hand side there and also that each one is level. So as we work our way up the wall, we want to stagger the seams and the panels. We do this by cutting each panel down to a different size to start each row. So we continue working our way across and up the wall by applying mortar to the wall with our square notch trowel, back buttering each panel, and then carefully setting it into place. So let's go over some additional key points to a successful installation. So start out your project by only mixing small amounts of mortar. The stuff can set up quick and if you have cuts, a lot of cuts to make, it can go fast. You also want to cut and dry fit as many of the pieces as you can prior to setting them and mixing the mortar. This will save you some additional time. Be sure to wipe off any excess mortar that gets on the face of the stones as you go. Once it sets up, it's going to be hard to get off. So for just eight to $10 a square foot and some time, you can create a really nice feature wall with real stone in your home. To learn more about the products or techniques we used in this video, stop by and see us at armchairbuilder.com.